So what was I saying? How is it that I'm always in the middle of a conversation and then like my mind goes blank? I just totally forget what I'm saying. Whatever. I guess that means it's time to move on. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I this is not even the whole point of me podcasting today. That was the longest rant for what I was trying to say is Delulu besties, welcome. This is a safe space to vent, talk shit, reflect, and most importantly, keep it real. It's better to trauma dump here so that we don't explode on innocent randos. Just admit it, you're bothered. What's up, Delulu besties? Welcome back to another episode of Balancing the Bullshit. Today, I'm here by myself. We'll see how this goes. I don't know if it's going to be weird talking to myself or if I'm going to have a lot of fun, but I miss talking to you guys and just hanging out. I feel like I haven't done that ever since Danny took a break. And Danny, for anybody who doesn't know, is my former co host. Well, he might still come back on. We don't know, but he just took a step back to focus on his mental health. Okay, I have to tell y'all about our skiing trip. So it was me, Danny, and David. David is my boyfriend. And I had never gone skiing. Danny's been a few times. He started skiing with his boyfriend last year. And then David grew up skiing. And I know everybody always goes on vacation. I've been to Tahoe. I like the snow. It looks really pretty. And I've been to the ski villages in Tahoe. And they're really pretty. But I never actually skied there. So I've always been curious to try because everybody goes on vacation and my definition of vacation is I'm taking a break from my life. I want to go relax, have fun. I don't want to pay all this money to go work. And I didn't realize that's what fucking skiing is. Why don't people talk about that more often? David was like, oh my God, yeah, it's so much fun. I'll teach you how to do it. So I was like, okay, cute. This will be like a little bestie boyfriend vacation. Why did no one ever tell me that you're like training to become a fucking Olympic athlete out there in the slopes. Also, I had it in my head that we were going to go somewhere cute like Tahoe where it's a little village. There's, you know, coffee. I could do shopping. They have live music, all this food and drinks, whatever. Well, the place that we went to had none of that. It was so intense for people who actually take skiing seriously. So we were out there I sucked at it. I didn't want to do it anymore. I was like, this isn't fun. I was coming here with the idea that it would be something casual that I could enjoy, like a normal fucking vacation. I did not realize I was signing up to be an Olympic athlete. And then I had nowhere to go. Literally, I have never cried so many times in my life before. So this is funny because it was an awful trip in that sense, but it was also such a good trip for personal growth sense because my life coach always talk to me about how I needed to figure out how to feel my emotions because I would show up to her sessions and she would be like, well, how do you feel? And I would be like, I don't know. And she'd be like, sad, frustrated, angry. And I would be like, I don't know. I don't even know how those feelings feel anymore. I think I just had gotten so used to suppressing my emotions and pretending that everything was fine when it wasn't. And so it got to the point after doing that for so many years, I just couldn't feel any of my emotions anymore. I just was numb all the time and I would get confused a lot. So even if I was happy or if I was sad, frustrated, like if any emotion at all came up, I would just be confused because I wasn't able to figure out how I felt. And so she was like, okay, start watching sad movies, do whatever you can to release emotions because our body stores emotions and it weighs us down physically so a lot of times when we're stressed out that's one reason why it may not even be whatever's going on in your actual life it might just be you have so much suppressed in your body and then whatever's going on in your life is what triggers all of the weight within you and that's why you feel so like heavy and off balance and super moody and emotional So it's really good to constantly be releasing emotions out of your body. So 
over the last few months, I've slowly started to be in tune with my emotions again after trying for so long. And it was kind of exciting. And this trip was one of those moments. At one point, I mean, at many fucking points, pretty much the entire trip, I just fell constantly in the snow. And at one point, David was like, oh, babe, stop crying. But see, it's little things like that. I'm not blaming him, but it's just how society teaches us all to be. Little things like that is what then tells our subconscious, hey, hide your emotions. Don't cry. And I was like, why not? Why can't I cry? And he was like, shit you're right and then it was so cute he laid down with me in the snow while I cried and all these kids who were like professional athletes just kept skiing by us but you know what I mean this is what I want to normalize in society like who taught us to not cry and to not express our emotions because it felt really good to be able to just release my emotions. And then I would be like, okay, I'm done crying. Let me get back up and try again. Whereas I think if I just suppressed it and brushed it off, like it's fine, no big deal. Let me keep going because that's how I used to live my life. Then I would have been really, really frustrated because, you know, you're pushing that down and you're holding it in your body. Whereas if you just cry in the moment, release it, then it's fully out of your body. And then you're starting over with the full clean slate. I mean, I'm not saying that's going to all of a sudden make you a professional because still <laughs> the first day I was like, okay, you know what? You're an amazing person. You're amazing at skiing, but you suck at teaching. And it makes sense because he was like, well, shit. I mean, when I first started skiing as a kid, I showed up to the lesson and I actually just ended up walking out like five minutes later because he said it just came natural to him. He put the skis on for the first time and then just was able to pick it up so quickly. And I just am not that person. That did not happen to me. The third day, I was so over it. I was like, I I just, yeah, I'm over it. So I was like, you know what? There's nowhere for me to go. All they had was a cafeteria with nasty ass food. And it was always crowded. And then a bar. But it was always super crowded too. Because those were the only two things available for people. So I was like, I don't want to try to sit in one of those places because people are going to be hovering around me nonstop to try to wait for the table like to see if I'm going to get up and take it it's so chaotic so I was like I will just sit by a tree in the snow and read a book and I actually would be so happy doing that but putting myself through this like I'm over I don't need to force it I tried it I'm glad I tried it I know it's not for me I am officially a beach girl and I'm happy vacationing at the beach from now on and yeah, I, don't, I just, I don't need to do this anymore. Like no need to force myself. I'm over it. So I brought the book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Mason. And it's funny because as I was grabbing, I was like, who the fuck reads on vacation? Like, I'm just not even that, that type of a girl. I'm usually so busy, go, go, going with my friends. But who knows? Maybe I'm a new person now. Anyway, I jotted down so many good points that I wanted to bring up to y'all Delulu besties. So here we go. Happiness comes from solving problems. The keyword here is solving. If you're avoiding your problems or feel like you don't have any problems, then you're going to make yourself miserable. See, and what was I just saying about me always suppressing my emotions? It seems like a good thing to do like oh I'll just brush it off I'm fine I'm gonna pretend it's fine everything's fine but no what it actually does is make you miserable I swear I don't make this shit up <laughs> okay back to the book if you feel like you have problems that you can't solve you will likewise make yourself miserable the secret sauce is in solving of the problems not in having problems in the first place and this is really important to note because I always forget, and maybe this is just a reminder to myself, maybe I'm podcasting to literally try to take my own advice. You know, a lot of times we're we're afraid of problems and we're like, oh, why can't life just be easy? But if it was easy, we would be so bored. So rather than fearing problems when they come up, maybe let's try to start embracing them like, oh, this is an opportunity for me to solve the problem, which will then lead to my happiness. To be happy, we need something to solve. Happiness is therefore a form of action. It's an activity, not something that is passively bestowed upon you, not something that you magically discover in a top 10 article on the Huffington Post or from any specific guru or teacher. It doesn't magically appear when you finally make 
make enough money to add on that extra room to the house. You don't find it waiting for you in a place, an idea, a job, or even a book for that matter. Happiness is a constant work in progress because solving problems is a constant work in progress. The solutions to today's problems will lay the foundation for tomorrow's problems and so on. True happiness occurs only when you find the problems you enjoy having and enjoy solving. And that is so true. I actually had to remind myself of this yesterday or really this whole month. I've talked a lot on this podcast about how I left corporate life because I wasn't fulfilled and I wanted to pursue something that lit my soul on fire, something that I'm passionate about. I didn't want to give so much of my life away just to make money. I was like, there's got to be a better way to live and do life. Like, I want to pursue my passions, help others, be of service, make a difference, and then make money as a byproduct of that make money as a byproduct of me enjoying my life so i was so happy i was on such a high because after trialing and erroring a few different things and not really sure of if i was making the right decision by leaving corporate life and pursuing an entrepreneur i was like well am i even meant to be an entrepreneur and then i finally found my groove and i was like hell yeah okay i feel like i'm an entrepreneur now i've got what i want to pursue this is everything i ever wanted i'm so happy now like now life will be peachy and then i hired an advertising agency and I have become obsessed this month with, oh my God, we're failing. Oh my God, they're not moving fast enough. Oh my God, they're not doing enough. What am I gonna do? I need to make money. It's crazy because now I'm so far into this that this is my new career. It's not like I'm going back. Like that's no longer a problem. But then once I found this new happiness, that came with, you know, another set of problems. So I literally just had to take my own advice. I had to remind myself over and over again, hey, this is actually right where you want to be. And it is true. I would take a bad day, quote unquote, bad day in entrepreneur life over a good day in corporate life. A bad day in entrepreneur life by far exceeds what a good day could ever be like in corporate life. And so I just had to remember, hey, you're still thriving. You're still winning at the end of the day. You're exactly where you wanted to be. You've created this life for yourself. So let's just enjoy the problem and know that we're going to fix it. Like (laughs) it'll be okay. Okay, whatever your problems are, the concept is the same. Solve problems, be happy. Unfortunately, for many people, life doesn't feel that simple. That's because they fuck things up in at least one of two ways. One is denial. Some people deny that their problems exist in the first place. And because they they deny reality, they must constantly delude or distract themselves from reality. This may make them feel good in the short term, but it leads to a life of insecurity, neuroticism, and emotional repression. Again, I can't harp on this enough. It's what I've been saying from the beginning about suppressing my emotions it, it literally just said that in the book. like, And I can attest to, I felt like a fucking neurotic, crazy person. I felt like my soul died. I was like, am I even human? I just, I don't even know how to describe how crazy I felt. And the thing is, how you show up to one thing is how you show up to everything. So when emotions would come up, not only would I suppress them and try to brush it off and pretend like everything was fine, but then it was the same with, problems it's not like i'm gonna suppress my emotions but then be so attentive to problems my personality doesn't just switch like that in a second how you behave is how you behave all the time everywhere that you go okay number two victim mentality oh this irks me i can't stand when people don't take fucking accountability Some people choose to believe that there is nothing they can do to solve their problems, even when they in fact could. Victims seek to blame others for their problems or blame outside circumstances. This may make them feel better in the short term, but it leads to a life of anger, helplessness, and despair. I can also attest to this because exactly what the book said, in the moment, like it's so fucking annoying when people don't take accountability like whether you think it's your fault or not just take radical responsibility and fix the problem because really it doesn't matter whose fault you think it is all that really matters is that you have a problem 
that needs to be dealt with. And if you don't deal with it, again, you're suppressing it. You're going to make yourself more miserable. Like the problem's not going to fix itself by being ignored. The way to be happy is to reclaim your power or to stand in your power is by just taking responsibility fix the problem it showed up in your life don't worry about the blame that's a waste of time and energy just fix it so that you can get on with your own life take responsibility for your life like no one else is going to fix it for you so it's up to you to figure out a way to be happy and this is how by taking radical responsibility in every single thing that shows up in your life whether it's your fault or not who cares and then think about how empowered you'll be afterwards where you're like fuck yeah i fixed that thing now I can move on with my life. Like it helps you build trust with yourself. It motivates you to keep going. And then when problems show up, you're not going to be as scared to tackle them because you have all of this history of proof in your back pocket that you're badass at solving problems whether they're your fault or not you just make it a habit and it gets easier and easier as time goes on oh also something else happened during the trip so they had a hot tub at our airbnb so every day after skiing we would go back to the airbnb and hot tub and i have put in so much work into working on my insecurities around my body because I used to always compare myself to other girls. I used to always think I wasn't good enough and I always thought it would be something outside of me that would fix it. Like, well, I've just got to lose weight. I've just got to diet and then I'll look better and then I'll feel better about myself. Y'all, I wrote a freaking book called Manifesting a Size Zero. Like, I have my dream body and even still, sometimes my ego tries to creep back in and tell me that I'm not good enough. And it happened during the trip. I put my bathing suit on to go get in the hot tub. And I guess like my belly jiggled a little bit, which is totally normal. (laughs) And I started putting myself down about it. I was like, what's going on? I've made it a habit to be really nice to myself. At first, I gave into that voice in my head. And I was like, oh, I don't want to go in the hot tub. I don't look hot enough. I want to be hot for my boyfriend, whatever. And then it kept coming up. The next day, I still felt shitty about myself. And then that's when I started to get curious. Like, why is this coming up? Then I remembered, okay, the goal here is not about how you look physically. That's not what's going to make you feel better. What is going to make you feel better is how you feel. Like the goal is to feel comfortable and confident in our bodies. And then the physical that goes away, that's not really a problem or an area of concern or focus anymore. So I just started to kind of like battle with the ego a little bit in my head. So, you know, when the thoughts would creep in like, oh, you look shitty, like you're getting fat or whatever. And let me remind you, I hate like bragging about my size, but I'm a size zero. I have abs, I'm fit, I do yoga and I run like four to five times a week. I eat healthy. That negative voice in our head is just fucking crazy. It'll make us believe shit that is not true at all. So anyway, I would try to challenge it. Anytime a negative thought like that would come in, I would tell myself, in my head. No, I actually feel really comfortable in my body. I feel so confident with who I am. I feel lucky to be inside this body. And I also had to remind myself to detach my identity from my body. I am a spirit and I am a soul living in this body. And then once I die, then my soul will leave this body. So, you know, this is just the body right now that's getting me through life. So it's not who I am. Like, I don't need to attach myself to it so much. I don't know. Try it. It worked for me. So whatever works to trick our minds and get us back on the right path, you know, I'll take it. As crazy as it sounds, I don't care. Anyway, yeah, I kept doing that for a few days. And so slowly, the more that I was like, no, I do. I feel confident and comfortable in my body. Like, it's just a body and I'm lucky enough to feel comfortable and confident in it. And It didn't work right away, but after like a day or two of doing it, I then came back home after the trip and I was so motivated to get back on the trail. I ran, I don't know, like 500 miles that week and ate super healthy. Funny how that works. Okay, listen to this from the book. 
We are wired to become dissatisfied with whatever we have and satisfied by only what we do not have. This constant dissatisfaction has kept our species fighting and striving building and conquering so no our own pain and misery aren't a bug of human evolution they're a feature i think it's just part of the human experience it's how we evolve as persons you don't want to be who you were at six years old evolving and growing over our lifetime is kind of what makes life life that's kind of what it's all about just experiencing this human experience so it makes sense that after a while we'll get bored of whatever the six-year-old experiences and then we'll want to move on to something new but at the same time what I've done which has really helped try to overcome this is my gratitude list I do it every day or almost every day and it helps me stay in the present moment so that way I Yes, I do still want to evolve as a human being. I don't want to stay here where I am forever. I mean, I actually wouldn't mind it. I love my life now. But I only love my life because of the gratitude list because it is very natural to, like I was saying just a minute ago, how I was so happy I was in a high about, oh, I'm an entrepreneur now. I found something that I'm passionate that I want to pursue, da, 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 I have my dream career. And then it wasn't good enough. Then I started struggling with, okay, well, we're not doing enough. We're not growing fast enough. Like, am I going to have to fire this agency, da, 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 da. It's like nothing is ever enough. So rather than focusing on that doing the gratitude every day helps me stay centered and grounded because it reminds me of what i am grateful for the good things that i do have going on in my life so it's just shifting away the focus from what's going wrong quote unquote to the things that are going right and i don't know i swear this is like magic but when you do this like when you focus your energy on the things that are filling up your cup and the things that are going right in life then magically more and more things start to go your way i think maybe it's just because that's how we're directing our subconscious so it's like rather than directing my subconscious to focus on the problems then you know it's going to go find more problems but if i'm focusing with the gratitude list on what's going right i guess our subconscious then focuses on other things that are going right i don't know life almost just magically works out Ooh, okay this is good listen to this And this pain, as much as we hate it, is useful. Pain is what teaches us what to pay attention to when we're young or careless. It helps show us what's good for us versus what's bad for us. It helps us understand and adhere to our own limitations. It teaches us to not fuck around near hot stoves or stick metal objects into electrical sockets. Therefore, it's not always beneficial to avoid pain and seek pleasure since pain can at times be life or death important to our well-being. Okay, speaking of, this is so good because going back to how my life coach wanted me to get in tune with my emotions, this is why. Because our emotions make life so much easier. They're actually a gift. They'll guide us through life so that way we don't have to make decisions ourselves. We could just leave it up to our emotions. So going back to this whole entrepreneur thing and wondering if I need to fire this agency that I'm working with or not, like, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds for me. But when I sat down to look at it, I asked myself, okay, how is working with this agency making me feel? And then I was like, well, it's making me feel not good. I'm not having fun. I'm not enjoying this. And one thing I learned from corporate life when I was in sales is I would always justify staying miserable because I would be like the grind, the daily hustle, the getting rejected all day long. It's fine because it'll be worth it when I get this big commission check or when I get this big sale or whatever. But the truth is those highs are only temporary. They only come for like it seems like a second and then you go back to the grind and the mystery and the hustle so those little highs are not even enough to overpower the rest of the misery that you have to go through on a day-to-day basis so what I had to learn was if I'm not enjoying the day-to-day activity the process then there's no point in doing it because that's life the day-to-day the mundane things that's kind of all we've got you know when we go on vacations they're only a few times a year like that's not 
what we're on this earth for that's not life like life will be so much easier when you start to appreciate the little day-to-day mundane things because that's what we have the most of so you might as well appreciate that anyway going back to this advertising agency dilemma i was like i don't know what i should quote unquote be doing i don't know what the right quote unquote or wrong quote unquote thing is to do but i do know that i really enjoyed my whole entrepreneur journey up until this point so it's just not worth it that's not something i'm going to tolerate dismissing my emotions And suppressing them and thinking, well, it's okay, you know, I'm paying them a lot of money, so it's going to pay off. Like, no, 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 we're not dismissing my emotions. We're going to listen to them and we're going to allow them to guide us. And life actually becomes really liberating that way, too. At first, it was scary for me to let go of the control and just surrender to my emotions because a lot of times it doesn't seem logical, like logically on paper why would I fire an advertising agency? Why wouldn't I keep working with them? But I don't know. My emotions are telling me that we're not having a good time. So whatever, that's just not something that we're gonna tolerate. It may sound crazy, it may not, but that's also what got me to this entrepreneur point to begin with. It was pretty much the same thing. Like it came to the point where I was like, okay, being in corporate life is not fun we're not having a good time here and i know logically on paper it seems like the right thing to do it's what everybody else in society does it's like checking off the boxes it's like you go to college you get a degree you get a job you get a nine to five you get married you get the white picket fence da, da, da. But i was like um i've done all that and listen i am depressed and miserable so nothing else has worked following the logical path and checking off the boxes hasn't worked so fuck it at this point i have nothing else to lose why don't we just try listening to my emotions and only doing things that make me feel good and the ultimate goal is just to have fun and be in the present moment and look it got me to now being an entrepreneur feeling fulfilled doing something that i love that i'm passionate about but another thing that i will say about that is sometimes you also just have to learn to witness your emotions it's kind of a fine balance i've sat with this emotion for almost a whole month now so that's why i'm like okay i can trust it okay and i feel like i'm harping on the same stick here so I'll shut up in a second, but I just have one last thing that I want to read. Like physical pain or psychological pain is an indication of something out of equilibrium, some limitation that has been exceeded. And like our physical pain, our psychological pain is not necessarily always bad or even undesirable. In some cases, experiencing emotional or psychological pain can be healthy or necessary. Just like stubbing our toe teaches us to walk into fewer tables, the emotional pain of rejection or failure teaches us how to avoid making the same mistakes in the future. And this is what's so dangerous about a society that coddles itself more and more from the inevitable discomforts of life. We lose the benefits of experiencing healthy doses of pain, a loss that disconnects us from the reality of the world around us. So, In other words, that's pretty much what I was just trying to explain. Try changing your perspective on rejection and pain and failure and even being uncomfortable. As uncomfortable as I've been this month in regards to my experience with this marketing agency. And I also don't want to talk bad about them. Like they're doing great. It's just how I feel. So they might just be a better fit for other clients, but for whatever the reason, I just don't feel good about it. So I just have to listen to them. I had to remind myself of that all month. Like I am sitting here with the discomfort and it's very uncomfortable, but it's trying to tell me something. So let's get curious about it. Let's not run away from it or try to fix and make sure that everything's happy. Let's just sit with it until it reveals itself, whatever needs to be revealed to me. And that's how we learn and grow and evolve and stay in the present moment which again is what leads to happiness overall as the title of the book says the subtle art of not giving a fuck my message from all of my ranting today is give less fucks just be present and sit with whatever's going on whatever's showing up for you and it'll lead to happiness it's running away that leads to misery just how i suppressed my emotions and pretended everything was fine other people could run away by 
drinking and partying or getting stoned or doing drugs or maybe sex addicts. There's so many ways that people kind of run away and suppress their emotions or whatever's going on in the present moment. Okay, wait, this was actually kind of fun. I didn't know how I was going to like podcasting by myself, but I think I'm into it. I might do a solo episode again. We'll see what else I find to rant about. But thanks so much for hanging out with me, Delulu Besties. Love you guys so much. You guys are part of my passion and what I'm pursuing now, just spreading awareness for mental health and creating a community where we all can learn off each other and try to make sense of this crazy life that we're all in for whatever the reason. So I'll see you guys next week. Listen up, Delulu Besties. If you want to learn all about manifesting and become a master at attracting anything you want in your life, check out my virtual manifesting masterclass, www.karen-rico.com slash shop, or click in the link in the show notes. And if you want to watch me podcast every week, check out my YouTube channel at Balancing the Bullshit or click on the link in the show notes.